Philipp Ligmeier from Renault, SciTech, and he will talk about the tenable metal surfaces. Okay, so thank you. Uh, I hope you can all see my screen correctly. And uh, yeah, let me start. So uh, welcome everyone. And I would like to speak about tunable meta surfaces based on vanadium dioxide platform, which is the stuff that we are dealing with here in Brno. First, I would like to speak briefly about meta surfaces. We have heard Magnus uh, describing some of these concepts. Uh, so I just I just make it very fast. Then about vanadium dioxide itself, like why is it interesting? And then about our work, uh, which uh, done uh, with, with this material and uh, eventually also with some uh, examples of uh, applications in the region, which is not, Exactly my field, but but I, I included he, uh, here for, uh, for for the audience from from this uh, from this field. Uh, so as 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 you have seen, like half an hour ago, whenever you you nanostructure matter, then you can get uh, very interesting interactions of this matter with uh, light, and very interesting uh, optical results. Uh, nature does it uh, in some situations, uh, but also people have uh, uh, have done this uh, uh, in past. And, uh, and here you can again see some some colored glass uh, windows and and a very famous uh, liquor goose cup, uh, uh, in, in which is which is a well known in plasmonics community. And uh, today we are. We are a little bit uh, more advanced with these, uh, with, the, with with our ability to uh, to nanostructure uh, materials, and even here in Brno we are playing with uh, uh, with such techniques like like lithography at, uh, and, and similar, uh, and we are capable of, of uh, also producing some some uh, some nice plasmonic colors, uh, which uh, which which can maybe familiar to you. And uh, uh, but it's it's not only about color. It's uh, nowadays meta surfaces are very often also about uh, optical components and and reproducing conventional optical components by uh, by nanostructured uh, surfaces. Uh, there are many examples uh, of of, uh, of these devices uh, from very uh, very broad uh, range of applications, ranging from from of course lenses, but uh, also to polarization uh, controlling components and uh, even some holographic or uh, other. Uh, other applications. Here on the right, you can see a very famous um, uh, uh, example from from Kapasas group from Harvard, where, where they were able to produce uh, very thin lenses based on these uh, very um, uh, very thin layers of nanostructured titanium dioxide, and uh, their resolution was uh, was. Uh, uh, comparable or even better than than conventional microscope objectives which are of course bulky and 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 quite uh, quite heavy and large uh, so this is this is basically state of the art of the of the current technology in metasurfaces and what we uh, would like to uh, to do in the future is to include the aspect of tunability uh, uh, in, in into these metasurfaces uh, here here is an Example for a very nice from a very nice review where you can see that that conventionally these meta surfaces are made passive, so you just fabricate them and they stay as uh, as they were fabricated uh, forever. You cannot change their optical function, so they they can create very interesting optical functions, but but this is static or or passive as as, as they say here. But of course, it's more um, uh, it can be more useful or more interesting to make them so, so called adaptive, uh, make them switchable, so you can switch them from one state to another state, almost like. Um, uh, 
digital uh, sort of uh, operation, but also tunable, which is usually uh, a term which you use for continuous uh, change of this optical function or, or, or freely tunable, which, uh, which these authors reserve for even more advanced uh, change of uh, the optical function of this, uh, of this uh, metasurface component. Uh, this tunability can be done by many ways. Uh, you have seen in uh, in Magnus talk uh, that you can use electrical or electrochemical, uh, so to say, uh, approach where you modify uh, the environment or the building block itself. There are many many other ways how you can do it. Uh, mechanical is is of course uh, mechanical way of actuation is of course very straightforward. Very interesting is uh, optical. Uh, uh, excitation or uh, optical tunability based on uh, either nonlinearities or some photocarrier excitations. There are some some other uh, other uh, means uh, which are not shown here. But what I would like to show uh, here today is utilization of phase change materials uh, and uh, in particular vanadium dioxide VO2. Uh, there are some other materials, most famously uh, GST, uh, germanium antibody telluride, uh, which, uh, which has some advantages, some disadvantages, uh, this is this is uh, for uh, maybe some different uh, discussion. So I would uh, today focus only on the on the vanadium dioxide. So why it is uh, interesting? Here is a, a table which I like very much. It shows you that uh, it shows you conductivity of various oxides, uh, which you can find in in nature, and and it also shows you the the immense scale of conductivities that you can uh, you can get with oxides it can go from almost like metal uh, metal behavior all the way down to to really good insulators and and it's really uh, tens of orders of magnitude yeah this is logarithmic scale so this change is 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 really massive uh, and uh, uh, vanadium dioxide uh, belongs in in a special type of uh, uh, oxide materials, so-called correlated uh, materials where, where electrons uh, are strongly correlated to each other and the, the optical properties or electronic properties uh, are uh, dependent on more factors than on simple uh, periodic potential of the, of the lattice. But most importantly, VO2 can go from, from an insulator state to a metallic state via uh, this phase change, uh, which uh, has been observed uh, in late 50s uh, uh, of the last century. And uh, here you can see how some oxides like titanium oxide uh, is, is fairly stable in, in very broad range of temperatures. This is uh, reciprocal, uh, reciprocal scale. So um, uh, the high temperature is on the left and low temperature is on the right. But anyway, uh, with VO2, with other, uh, uh, st uh, other stoichiometries of, of vanadium oxide, you can observe very large change in conductivity uh, again, spanning several orders of magnitude just by heating this material up. And this uh, sparkled um, uh, very, very vivid uh, research area where people are using this, uh, this material uh, for, uh, to tune or to utilize it in, 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 in various uh, applications. Why? Uh, in particular, this VO2 stoichiometry is, is one of the most popular today is because the transition temperature of, of VO2 is, is, is probably the closest one uh, to, the, uh, to, to the room temperature. So it's, it's around 68 or 70 degrees of Celsius. Uh, uh, quite easily achievable. You don't need uh, very expensive cryostats or, or heating to very, uh, very large temperatures. This is this is uh, achievable uh, very easily, and you can even push this transition temperature down closer to uh, to room temperature by uh, by doping. So so VO2 seems to be very promising in this uh, in this aspect. Uh, here is just 
another uh, visualization of of the of this uh, metal to insulator or insulator to metal transition this is dielectric function or permittivity uh, if you wish uh, real part and imaginary part and whenever your real part of permittivity goes below uh, below zero approximately you can say uh, that the material behaves like like a metal and here you can see two temperatures so this is our measurement uh, using spectroscopic ellipsometry we extracted uh, dielectric functions dielectric function of of our thin layer of, of vo2 and you can see how in in the visible and uh, and near uh, ir region vo2 nicely shifts from uh, from uh, high index uh, uh, dielectric uh, with of course some losses uh, into uh, metal uh, metal behavior and and for for the audience which is uh, which is here today uh, i I included also this part of electromagnetic spectrum that this is also true uh, in, in, in terahertz or high frequency, high frequency gigahertz range uh, where conductivity basically uh, imaginary part of, of dielectric function uh, spans again uh, several orders of, uh, of magnitude as you go from, from room temperature to uh, 60, 70 uh, degrees of Celsius. So this is the reason why, uh, why uh, it is uh, so uh, so interesting and now uh, also how it is incorporated uh, incorporated into meta surfaces so you can use a very straightforward approach and use it as a tunable substrate so uh, you make a thin film of vo2 um, this is very simple no, not very simple but but this is doable and then you nano then you put your nanostructures from some other material on top and and use them as uh, nano antennas um, or, or some scattering resonators and you can produce tunable colors you can you can uh, produce tunable uh, polarization components and 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 many other uh, there are many other examples uh, of this approach uh, or uh, you can use more advanced uh, technique where you nanostructure uh, the tunable material itself uh, like you can see uh, here in these examples and uh, of course this this is uh, then your transition in vo2 is is basically inside uh, your building block, inside um, your your nanostructure, and everything is uh, supposedly more uh, straightforward. Uh, of course, this is not always the truth, but uh, but again, you can see very nice results of um, uh, of optical modulators or near IR telecom modulators or uh, some phase shifters uh, for for few uh, for some further applications in in meta surface. And, and now I would like to speak about our contribution to, to this. Um, uh, for example, first, uh, when we started with this, uh, uh, we also used this indirect uh, approach of uh, tunable uh, substrate, where we put gold nanoparticles, gold uh, nanodisks on top of vanadium uh, dioxide thin film, and we show how you can tune uh, tune the plasmonic resonance of the gold uh, nanoparticles indirectly by by changing the temperature of the VO2, which then goes through this transition and, and, and modifies the dielectric environment of of these of these nanoparticles. Uh, this has some some uh, some hysteresis, which can be smaller than this or larger than this. Uh, depends on your on your application. It has some sort of memory effect also, which is familiar from from magnetic uh, materials. Uh, and and it, it, it was a nice start to, to this field. Uh, then we, we did some sort of hybrid approach where we uh, um, observed uh, that uh, if you grow VO2 on a specific, uh, specific crystal plane of uh, sapphire crystal, then you can get these nice uh, nanowire-like structures or these, uh, these one-dimensional uh, nanowires uh, made of VO2. And we thought that, that this, this looks like a, a confinement which, which you want to achieve with, with plasmonic nanostructures. And this, that uh, we expected that this could have some sort of uh, plasmonic resonance. And indeed, uh, where we used samples fabricated by our colleagues in, in, in at Vanderbilt, uh, uh, we measured uh, pl nice plasmonic resonance uh, in uh, telecom uh, region, which can be uh, 
turned on and off or continuously tuned if you are able to continuously tune the temperature uh, uh, at, at very interesting uh, uh, optical or uh, infrared uh, infrared region of course this is uh, also polarization dependent so you can uh, use this uh, degree of freedom if you uh, if you want to and uh, use this uh, sort of hybrid approach where the vo2 is nanostructured not by uh, you as a uh, as a uh, some as a fabrication person by it grows like this uh, if you uh, uh, set your growth conditions in your uh, in your chamber uh, accordingly and use uh, substrate with with proper uh, with proper surface uh, orientation uh, and then we wanted to push it uh, even even further, and we wanted to nanostructure VO2 uh, uh, itself. Uh, this is work done by uh, a student, uh, Peter Kepic, who who did a really impressive work uh, by uh, fabricating these structures, and and together with uh, with other people from our group, my, Martin Hertan, his name was already mentioned uh, here today. Uh, we did also numerical simulations related to to these uh, building blocks, as we call them. Uh, and we observed um, in um, in near IR range where VO2 is uh, is very well known and very uh, very much used, where you basically switch the plasmonic resonance on and off. There is no resonance in the in the dielectric state. If uh, you look into the visible range, you can observe so-called near resonances, these resonances in dielectric nanostructures, uh, and you can then somehow uh, switch between uh, near resonances in this metal, uh, which is true for uh, infrared region, but invisible is uh, lossy dielectric and this little bit less lossy dielectric in the room temperature state. And the, and the modulation, this is experiment uh, in transmission and in, uh, in extinction sort of transmission modulation, uh, you can get uh, also quite interesting values of uh, modulation, uh, modulation uh, depth. Uh, moreover, uh, I didn't speak about it, but you can induce this phase transition of VO2 by other means, not only by heating the sample up, which is of course the, one of the simplest approaches, but you can use electrical uh, current uh, or optical uh, or even optical means. And this is what you can see here, where you, you can observe how uh, resonance uh, in the uh, in the array of VO2 nanodisks is tuned by uh, by excitation uh, uh, with uh, red red laser light, and you can uh, you can see how you can tune this by uh, uh, increasing the uh, laser power. Uh, so it seems that my time is running up. So uh, I just make, make, make a quick summary. So you can see that uh, by nanostructuring uh, um, dielectric or metal uh, materials, you can uh, you can get very interesting optical applications uh, in terms of uh, color, but also other uh, optical functions like lensing or holography. Uh, if you want to uh, uh, render your uh, meta surface tunable, one of the options, very interesting one in my opinion, is vanadium dioxide, uh, which uh, uh, which has some advantages. Uh, uh, of course, there are some disadvantages which which I don't have time to explain, uh, but I can. Uh, I can do it later. And I showed you three examples uh, of our work where we, uh, what we did with, with this, this material. Uh, uh, at the end, I also added some some um, uh, references to to literature regarding terahertz region, which is not not uh, not a region where I'm uh, familiar with, with with these applications. But maybe some of you might might find it useful. This is one of the first applications uh, uh, which I have I was able to find was in nature in um, almost 15 years ago, uh, where you modulate uh, terahertz uh, transmission. You can do it uh, by electrical means uh, as, as, it, as it is shown here with only very small amount of VO2 basically uh, breaking uh, or uh, shortcutting uh, these uh, the, these resonators in uh, in terahertz region or you can uh, use some some other structures and mo modulate uh, reflection phase or you can use even optical 
optical means of uh, of uh, tuning, and you can uh, uh, you can modulate uh, phase of the ter terahertz radiation by visible visible laser. There is very nice review uh, which which you can refer to uh, if you are interested. And with this, I would like to, to thank all my uh, colleagues and collaborators, especially from our group, but also from, uh, from uh, other, other universities. All right, so thanks. Uh, thank you everyone for, for listening, for coming, and yeah, I'm open for, for questions, of course. Yeah, thank you very much, Philip, for this nice talk. Uh, do we have questions? Uh, Christoph? Um, yeah. So I have a yes. I have a question about the, the about the thickness of the VO two. So generally, what's the thickness of VO two you are using? Well, uh, it of course depends on your applications. Uh, uh, on, your, uh, on your application. Uh, Usually it's it's uh, tens or hundreds of, of nanometers. Um, for example, high tens like 80, 90, 100 deg uh, nanometers uh, for for these uh, resonators, which are uh, which should uh, work uh, in uh, uh, in dielectric uh, phase. You need to have some sort of uh, thickness in order to achieve to be able to excite uh, also some higher order modes, uh, which are very interesting. Uh, so you you go up to 200 or 300 nanometers in thickness. Um, it all depends uh, on your application. Of your of course, if you if you make it thicker, your losses add up, and uh, you get um, um, higher losses in transmission. Um, it, it depends. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, I have a second question: is, is that if you use the VO2 as a spacer, so what's the thinnest uh, film you can achieve? So is uh, so if the film is really thin, can you observe some change about the transition temperature or something? Yeah, relative? yeah, it's uh, that's one of the things we we are thinking of, and we have some some future work uh, uh, ready. But but it's it is a problem if you want to make VO2 very thin. Uh, you have you have a trouble to to get uh, high quality switching and and nice nice films. So there are there are there is uh, there is a couple of works uh, describing the positions of ultra thin VO2 films. If you s drop me an email or or s I can refer to you uh, refer to you to these to these works. It's it's not an easy task. Some people claim. They they have nice nice VO2 films, but they don't show, uh, in my opinion, sufficient evidence for that. So it's uh, yeah, it's an interesting um, uh, uh, maybe problem for future work, I would say. So what what the safety thickness do you think? Uh, I actually honestly don't remember which which one was used in in this work. It's written in the paper. Maybe it was fifty or sixty nanometers. I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, if okay. if you go below below maybe twenty nanometers, uh, you you start to get uh, in trouble. That that is my answer. If, if it's okay, not. got it. Thank you very much. Very interesting one. Okay, I see Magnus. Yes, uh, thanks for a very nice talk. Uh, exciting uh, material also. Actually, I think this slide answered my question. I was uh, curious about the hysteresis of, of the signal. Uh, so it, it's true then that uh, you heat and you change it and when it cools, it automatically goes back. So how, yeah. do, peop how do people implement then when, when you use light to control it? I guess you it will only be changed during illumination, but not if you remove it then. Or do you use different wavelengths to, to change back and forth? So, yeah, there, there's, there, that's actually more than one question. So, so I'm not sure which I should, should answer first. So, uh, you can you can decrease this this hysteresis by having high quality VO2 films. You can get uh, down to maybe three to five degrees of Celsius of, of hysteresis. And there are some works uh, using SNOM, for example, which describe the nature of this transition and how these mm -hmm. uh, metallic and, and dialectic domains appear. Maybe you know it. Uh, so so that's, that's one aspect of it. Uh, if you go into optical uh, modulation, there is, for example, our paper, which I didn't reference uh, here, um, 
uh, or maybe maybe it's in this one. I'm I mean, I'm, I'm really stupid. I'm, I don't remember. Where we can we can show uh, how you can uh, use optical pumping with UV laser uh, with UV light, conventional UV lamp, not laser light, and how how this how this behaves when you when you keep the temperature at uh, one point and you just use light to tune it uh, to, to some to some point, and you have these small histories, uh, small little histories, cis. Uh, yeah, uh, within within this big hysteresis. Yeah, so you can you can mm. somehow play with that, uh, and it's it's uh, in our paper uh, shown as well. And of course, uh, the most interesting application is when you, you when you use it um, if for very short time scales. Yeah, so you use pump laser and you uh, you do everything in terms of like pump probe response, and then this um, it's it's more complicated because you don't have like full uh, uh, phase transition involving the crystal lattice. Yeah, you have some sort of electronic uh, transition, electronic excitation, which is uh, related to these correlated states of electrons. So this whole behavior is based on correlated electrons inside this material, and of course by not only by the lattice, yeah, which is conventional lattice controls the band structure, but here it's electrons. And if you pump it by light, you have for a very short amount of time excited electrons, which which have really complicated interplay. So then you somehow decouple the phase transition of VO2 and you have lattice which is still in the monoclinic state, dielectric state, but you have electronic state which corresponds to uh, to metallic dielectric functions. Mm. So you have to somehow play with that and hysteresis in this very short time scale doesn't have, um, um, it has a little bit different meaning I would say or it's not sure. that important. Yeah, so, but it's ultra fast field and I'm not very, like I'm not uh, so much expert in, in this. Uh, yeah, so. Thanks a lot, thanks.